more on this. And uh, TRT World's health correspondent, Nicola Hill, is in London with more. Um, Nicola, help us understand. So if the vaccine um, didn't stop monkeys from getting infected, um, why are they continuing the trial? Well, it certainly showed that there was still the virus in the nasal passageways of the monkeys. But this study showed that there was less virus in the lungs and in the airways. And those monkeys that had been given the vaccine didn't then get the pneumonia, which is something that causes the severe COVID-19 and even death. So because of that, the OXO group want to, want to expand their human trials that they're doing at the moment. So far, they've um, vaccinated about 800 people. And Professor Pollard, Professor Andrew Pollard, who's leading the group, said today that he has got data on these phase one human trials, which was looking at safety and an immune response. But he's not publishing that at the moment because it would affect the integrity of the trial as people don't know whether they have the real vaccine or whether they had a placebo. But he must be confident enough to extend it. And he's now wanting more than 10,000 extra people. First of all, he wants three different groups. He wants five to 12 year olds, 56 to 69 year olds and over 70s. And this is when he wants to look at the safety and the immune response similar to the phase one trials he's done already. And then he wants a further 10,000 people from 18 sites across the whole of the UK to see whether the vaccine is effective. So he, this is the phase two trial. This is the second step. And that's what he's um, recruiting those people now. That's a lot of people. But the big question is when, when, when will we know if this works? We all want that one answered, don't we, Maria? Well, he's actually asking people who are frontline workers, people who work in the health service, who are care workers, the people who are actually coming into contact with COVID-19 and people infected. He wants to recruit them. And the reason why is when they give the vaccine, they can't then give somebody the, the virus to see if, it's work, if it works because it will be unethical as they haven't got a treatment. So they're relying on something called community transmission, where the people who've been vaccinated then come into contact with the virus and with people who are infected. Now, people who are self-isolating or social distancing, it's going to take them a lot longer to come into contact, whereas these frontline workers, like we can see these pictures here, these are the people who are actually um, coming into contact with the virus much more much more often and sooner. So if he manages to recruit those people and he can find out then if the vaccine's working, we'll begin to get results. And interestingly, AstraZeneca, the pharmaceutical company, has done this deal with the Oxford Group and it says that it could have 30 million doses of the vaccine available here in the UK by September. And it hopes to actually be able to make a billion doses if it works. Fingers crossed for that. So that's, the, uh, that's Oxford University. What do we know about other potential vaccines around the world? Well, there's more than 100 being discovered. And the WHO says there's about eight front runners. Now, the main one that we've heard about is Moderna. This is in the US. And you probably remember that they were the first one to show us pictures of somebody being vaccinated. Now, they've had results of eight people. I mean, this is a very small study. But they have said that these eight people are beginning to show antibodies to the virus. So that's that's optimistic. It doesn't mean it can protect or prevent people getting coronavirus, but it's certainly an optimistic step on the way. And then there's another study going on in China, but that's not being publicly declared, uh, declared and shared. And then there's another in, in view in the US. They're also doing trials in humans. So there's masses of work being done at the moment. And we're just having to wait and see who finds the best one and how soon. But there is no guarantee we will even find a vaccine, unfortunately, because we haven't found ones for malaria or HIV. But let's be optimistic. And let's hope that all this scientific research that's being carried out across the world will be successful. Absolutely, Nicola. We never lose hope. Nicola Hill, live for us there from London. Thank you so much. <laughs>